there everybody good morning look at the time look at the time two minutes after seven that means it's time for another installment of seven minutes in the morning today i'm going to explain to you in short succinct bites <laughs> why work-life balance is overrated if that's something that you're pursuing you want to figure out how to have work-life balance you want to figure out how to work and enjoy stuff like holidays stay tuned this is seven minutes in the morning where five days a week you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success and now here's the host of seven minutes in the morning and your results coach Tom Rigsby Hey there, good morning. When you get here, this is 7 Minutes in the Morning Show where we talk about how to start, grow, and enjoy the benefits of business ownership and entrepreneurship like having work-life balance. And when you get here, I want you to do what Joe's done already and a couple of other lurkers are feverishly typing on their keyboards to accomplish. Leave a comment, say hi, hello, good morning, how you doing? What the heck is work-life balance? Don't know what you're talking about. Any of those things are okay because that's what we're going to talk about today. I have a... <laughs> uh, yes, be bold and blessed today. You know what? I like that one a lot, so I'm just going to do that. Put that right up there on the screen. Hey, um, listen, when we get done, I'm going to ask you to think about somebody who needs to hear this message today. So as we're going through this today, let that marinate there in the reticular activating part of your brain so that it will tell you who to share this with. Then click on the little share button, send it to them because they need to hear it. So our quote of the day today comes from a very polarizing person, <laughs> but uh, it's still a good quote. If you're interested in balancing work and pleasure, try making work more pleasurable. I'm, I'll tell you at the end, I'll tell you who said that, but before we do that and to save the risk of polarizing, I'm going to say that till the end, but if you want to go look it up and leave in the comments who you think said it, then okay, that's fine. If you're interested in balancing work and pleasure, try making work more pleasurable. I do a ton of marketing around work-life balance, and yet I don't believe in it. Now, Tom, how can that be? I can hear you saying that now. Well, here's, here's the point. Here's, um, I'll just get right to it. This idea, think about it. Just logical brain for a second. In order to balance, I always think about a seesaw or a teeter-totter, right? And you got life on one side and work on the other side. In order to do that, you have to break them apart into two different things. It's necessary. In, in order to balance two things, there have to be two things. The reality, though, is that there are not two things. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe, <coughs> maybe they're two sides of the same coin, but they're not two different things. Work is just part of life. And in fact, your work should actually help you achieve your dreams, not just occupy your time. The problem is, and I, you've heard me say this many times, you're uniquely gifted, talented, and placed for an abundant life to do work that matters, and that work will call to you. The problem is we compromise. Well, I can't get paid enough doing that, or I could get paid doing this, get paid better doing this, or whatever. And we relegate that calling to a hobby or side hustle or something that's not important. And when we make that compromise, we get a job, we're doing work that we don't like the people we work for. 70% of people leave a job. I'm just going to put this out there. If any one of you here agrees, you can say so. 70% of people leave a job because they don't like their boss. I guess the other 30% leave because they don't like the people they're working with. See, so you don't like the work, you don't like the boss, you don't like the people you're working with, don't like having to get up and go in, fight traffic, 
whatever, right? So, so that whole part of your life tends to build its own box. And you want to take that box and be able to sit it over here, put that away, and enjoy the rest of my life. I can't wait for the weekend. Why? Why wait? I mean, but because I've got this work thing. I go, oh, okay. So your work's not aligned with giving you a, a, an abundant, fulfilled life. Okay, all right, I see, I get it. And therein lies the problem. We're trying to segment it off into this separate thing. So what do you do? As our quote of the day says, if you're interested in balancing work and pleasure, try making work more pleasurable. How about answering the call? I, I've made this analogy a lot of times. Yeah, it's the Donald. I made this analogy a lot of times where you are uniquely gifted, talented, you know, to be a, a shaped like a puzzle piece. And there's only one spot in the puzzle where it'll fit, and that spot calls to you. Answer that. Do that. Well, maybe there's some transitional steps you need to take, and I am happy to help you with those. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and drop it here in the comments. I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. Here's a link. If you need help, go to that link. Schedule a time for us to talk. No cost, no obligation. Happy to do it to help you figure out the transitional steps between where you are and where you need to be. To shift momentum. That's really what we're talking about. The reason you keep a job, the reason you keep doing the thing you're doing is because of momentum. And in order to change, to change that direction and shift toward the thing that is calling you, you need to take begin taking steps and let the momentum shift from where you're going to where you want to go. And then before you know it, your momentum's headed that way. I'm, I'm working through, I'm testing a practice right now. And I'll probably talk more about after the first of the year around New, Year, New Year's resolutions and things like that. But 1% improvement. Did you know if you make a 1% improvement every day that it only takes 71 days to double your results? That's all. 71, not even 100 days, 71 days. Go do the math. You can see that I'm right uh, because of compounding. 71 days. That's the rule of 72, right? So um, uh, 71 iterations, rule of 72. The point being, it, it only takes you a third, a third, 70% right, of the time that you thought in order to double your results. And you only have to make a 1% improvement every day. You don't have to go, you don't have to quit your job and jump in the deep end of the entrepreneurship pool tomorrow. But you do have to take that first step and let that momentum begin to build. So, as Joe pointed out, it is the Donald, our present president, Donald Trump, who said, if you are interested in balancing work and pleasure, try making work more pleasurable. He understood, and this quote is uh, from the book, and uh, the book's 20 years old, so... I mean, he's known this for a little while. Um, they're not two separate things. That's why I can say things like, I work every day, and not feel bad about it. I mean, there's, <laughs> I, I, see, I see people who call themselves business owners and entrepreneurs post on Facebook how excited they are for the weekend. Oh, I really don't. Don't understand that. All right. Little bits add up to big results, says Catherine. Yeah, your boss keeps following you. Yeah, that's pretty funny. All right, that's it for today. As you go through your day today, I want you to think about, is this, is what you're doing today, what you are uniquely gifted, talented, and placed to do? Is this the work that you're supposed to do, the work that matters? Is this leading you toward your abundant life? If it's not, as we are wrapping up the new year, and in the post that, that accompanies this video, holy crap. No, when, when the clock rolls over midnight at the end of December, it's not just the end of 2019. It's also the end of a decade. So I usually ask at the end of the year, you know, last year you said you'd be where? Here. Last decade you said you'd be where? Just think about that for a minute. Part of the deal. Yeah, that's right. Part of the deal. 
All right, you guys have a uh, fantastic Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow with another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Hey, don't forget, I asked you this at the beginning. I seeded this thought for your reticular activating system to go to work. You know now somebody who's frustrated with work that they don't enjoy. Send them a link to this video. I bet they'll tell you thank you. You guys have a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.